Welcome back everyone to another top 5 epic level handbook episode. Have you never heard of the epic level handbook? In 3rd edition, they decided to go beyond level 20, the maximum cap. The book includes feats, skills, character abilities, spells, and of course, magical items. And so today, I'm going to be going over 5 magic items, taking the unwritten rules of D&D and completely shattering them. Now, of course, these are all from 3rd edition, but I do believe that we can at least gain some inspiration or take them one for one, adapting into 5th edition rules, which are pretty close in most circumstances, and bring them into our 5th edition games or whatever games you're running. These items get even crazier as the levels go up. Stay tuned to see some of the craziest weapons that this book has to offer. So without further ado, let's get into the first item. Now the first item I'm going to be talking about is a shield that has a lot more than just great defense, and that item is the Bulwark of the Great Dragon. It is a plus six large shield made from the scales of a great worm dragon and bears the graven image of a dragon's head. Besides just being a plus six shield, it also has a very offensive ability. Three times per day, the bearer of the shield can command it to belch forth a breath weapon of the appropriate type. The range of this breath weapon is 80 feet and does 20 d6 points of whatever damage you decide the dragon color is. In addition, the shield provides the bearer with resistance 50 to the energy type that matches its breath weapon, which is a little bit of 3.5 stuff. Essentially, all you need to know about it is that if you slay a dragon, take its scales, and turn it into a shield, it will have a breath weapon of whatever type dragon. So if you slew a red dragon, you could have a cone of fire, a black, maybe a line of acid. That being said, even though this item is almost worth 2 million gold pieces and has a great ability, shields do go up to plus 10 in D&D, so this isn't even the peak of shield. Getting into the second item is a beautiful weapon called Chaos Bringer. Chaos Bringer is also a plus 6 weapon. It is a great axe of chaotic power, which grants its wielder a well-known ability in D&D, and that is the ability to rage once per day. If you know anything about multi-classing or barbarians, just getting the ability to rage and having that class feature brought from a weapon can be considered ridiculously overpowered. And if you already have a greater rage class feature, the weapon also grants the wielder the incite rage epic feat, which essentially allows you to also grant rage to one of your allies whenever you fly into a frenzy. So if you are not a barbarian and you wield this weapon, you will essentially become a small version of one and if you're already a Barbarian, you can lend your strength to another teammate. Regardless, bringing class features into weapons make it a very interesting and powerful artifact worth an estimated 4 million gold pieces. The next weapon is another plus 6, and that is Grip Soul. This terrible weapon is in rune with green glowing sigils and is set with a jet black pearl on the crossguard. The plus 6 longsword, but instead of dealing additional damage on a critical hit, the weapon imprisons the victim in a gem set in the pommel of the sword as per a binding spell heightened to 16th level, which is a DC of 30 to escape. The same is true of any blow that would otherwise kill a foe or knock him unconscious. Only one creature can be so held, but the wielder can release the bound soul at any time with a command word. If you know anything about D&D or fantasy in general, you know that souls are a very powerful element of it. So the ability to trap one upon a critical hit, immediately killing whatever you're fighting if they fail this check, or imprisoning a soul for whatever purpose you want, is a very powerful ability. And for a low price of 2 million gold pieces, the power to command and control souls could be yours. The final weapon and fourth item I wanted to talk about today is the Ever Whirling Chain. There's only a plus 4 item, but it has a very unique skill set. This ever-dancing spiked chain of speed continuously twitches in its wielder's hands, as if it were ready to spring to the attack or defense on its own accord. The wielder of the ever-whirling chain can use it to make any number of attacks of opportunity per round. In D&D, in any situation, giving an unlimited amount of anything during combat can be very dangerous. Imagine fighting a horde where any number of creatures that run or move away from you in the fight are being hit one by one an unlimited amount in one turn, getting snapped with a plus four ever whirling chain. An opportunity to attack is obviously not something you can prompt, but taking advantage of a fleeing foe and being able to do it as many times as you have foes fleeing can be an extremely powerful ability. One that will cost 5 million gold pieces. 
And the final item is the Ring of Weapon Breaking. This one's not that powerful, but one that would be sure to annoy your players if you gave it to an NPC or an enemy. This ring is identical to a ring of iron skin, which provides a very good damage reduction to all but adamantine, but has one additional very important power, and that is any weapon that successfully strikes the wearer must also make fortitude saving throw or be shattered into pieces. It doesn't specify magic, it doesn't specify regular, it says any weapon that successfully strikes the wearer has the possibility to be shattered into pieces if they do not make this DC 20 saving throw. An ability that makes rust monsters look obsolete. And you can catch it for the fair market price of 600,000 gold pieces. And if you have the HP pool to back it up, you just hope that your enemies didn't bring enough weapons. Thank you everyone for watching. I think that reviewing some of these even higher fantasy elements of 3.5e, especially in these epic level handbooks, can give us a lot of inspiration for things that are left out of 5th edition, like some of these higher level, beyond level 20 items, to either give inspiration for some legendary or artifact weapons that you want to create for your players in whatever game you run, or ideas for abilities for enemies. I think this is one of the coolest books that I've seen in D&D, has a lot of great ideas, and maybe some of them are a bit game-breaking, but definitely take anything you see in it with a grain of salt if you use it for inspiration. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please be sure to like and subscribe and comment if you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.